In some recent videos, I showed off my favorite pens and this little case that I made that I can just roll up and take with me. And we've had a lot of requests for how to make this. Can I provide a pattern? Hi, I'm Sarah from SewingMastery.com. We do videos on a more sewing machine educational tutorials, but today I'm going to explain how I came up with this pattern. Now, it is kind of part of a video. I talked about the happiness project. It's just my journal that I picked up and every day you can write just a short happy thing that happened and then there's five actual um, years worth of information on one page. So it's something I've enjoyed and actually just recently as of yesterday there's always a quote at the top and one of the quotes and this is one of my favorites is don't let the perfect be the enemy of good. Now I bring that up because we get a lot of questions that are just like how exactly did you do that and I want I want to explain that part of the sewing journey is practice. We talked about that in a recent video and a lot of people understood what I was talking about. You, you need some skills so you can create on your own. And that's exactly what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you the foundation of how to make this. But if I was to give you every little like cut this size and this size and this and this, not everybody is going to need this size. Some of you are going to want to do it for crayons or other things. And so I'm going to give you just the basics and how I came up with the idea. Um, and honestly, this is a item that my mom made originally for me when I was young for my crayons. And I remember rolling it up. And um, these just happen to be some of the new Inkjoy pens that I am in love with for journaling um, or just for writing. It's a great pen. I'll link to those um, in the description below. So what are you needing? So I'm going to give you the generic version. So if you want to do this for colored pencils or uh, maybe something not as extensive, or maybe you want to do it for even more, how do you start? So first off, you are going to need a base. Can you see that the pens are laying on a base? That base is going to need to be a little bit sturdy. So one of the things to do is take your piece of fabric and make it bigger than you think you're going to need it. And that's what I did is I, I don't know how long I was going to need it to be, but I didn't want to get to get into it and then realize, oh, I wish I had started with a bigger piece. So first, start with a bigger piece than you think you're going to need. It's super easy to cut it down. Next, I wanted to have a little bit of some firmness to it. So I am a fan of always ironing on some woven interfacing. This is one you can get on a roll. A lot of embroiderers use this, so you can work with your local sewing machine store and ask for a fusible woven interfacing. And then it's just handy because you can just roll it off, cut it, and then fuse it. If it is something you're doing bigger, you can always fuse multiple pieces together. The overlap doesn't matter. So I have gone ahead and created a base. Now we're going to make the little pin pockets on here and that's what we're going to do next. But you are also going to need another one about the same size for when you're done. After you've made all your pockets, you're going to have another piece you're going to lay right sides together and stitch all the way around. And that's going to be then what you're going to turn and voila, you're going to have kind of the base and the back of the colors you want. So if you do the same colors or do different colors, have fun with that. Okay, so I have two of those ready to go. Both of them were interfaced to give it just a little bit of body. Next, I didn't know how much, you know, you're gonna need pockets for these pins. How much? And this is why I didn't wanna get into specifics because everybody's gonna get down to like, well, did you mean this or measurement to this or how did you, and, and so again, part of the sewing process is practicing and trying out and experimenting. And one of the things I remember in my years of teaching kids classes is that kids are more willing to just play. If you give them a box of scraps, you know what the first thing they're gonna do? They're gonna take two pieces, whether they put them right sides together, wrong sides together, and they're going to sew a 
square like a pillow and they're going to ask for stuffing. I mean, how do they know to do that? But they feel like it, sewing means creating something and sticking something in it. And sometimes we forget that as adults is that we need to look at things, just try it and see if you can come up with what you're trying to make. If you were going to try to make a, a cover for your grill, for example, I mean, there's not a pattern for that. You're going to kind of like do some measuring and maybe drape some fabric over it and go, okay, well, if I do it this size and maybe make it a little bigger, then I can cut it here and, and, and sew it up and then decide if it's right or not. You don't know if it's going to turn out when you start. And that's what I hope for you with some of your future projects is that the tutorials we make for your sewing machine is so you know how to use the tool or tools that are in the machine and the fun features, and then you're gonna be able to sit down to something like this and play. Now, I will tell you, this is not, every time we are going to make the pockets, it is time consuming, because you need to mark each pocket, sew the pocket, mark each pocket, and sew the pocket. So I've started off with a larger piece. This one is not interfaced, but it is a piece that I've gone ahead and just folded in half. So the folded edge will be the edge that the pins are going to come down and um, sit at. Okay, how tall? Well, I don't know. You might experiment and see how tall your items are to see how big that pocket needs to be. Again, go oversized. You can always position this and cut it down later. So what you're gonna do, and I've got just some of my favorite pins here, is you're gonna go ahead and mark a line. Okay, I don't know, just start somewhere. Sew a line, actually, instead of marking it. But I'm going to just kind of pin the line that I'm going to sew, or sew, do you know what I mean? Okay, so once my line is sewn, you're going to take your item, pen, pencil, crayon, and slide it in. Now pretend you are a pen and you need yourself a pocket and you're going to then realize that if you put some pins on the other side of it so that it's not too tight to get in but it's going to hold it in place that when you pull that out you have an idea. Now you could even measure what the base is for so like every you know inch I'm going to put one and a half inches worth of fabric. And that's why I didn't really want to write a pattern because again, it could get confusing and how do you write it so everybody understands. So once you get that first one done and sewn, test it. Put your pin back in. Oh, I like that. That's a little too tight, a little perfect, whatever. Then you're going to repeat for the next one. Measure over, put the pin in, see how it's going to sit next to the first one. I mean, this is not something that's just going to be like a set amount for every single thing you're going to create. Maybe you want a little gap in between here. You choose what works best for you. I do have to say that I did give myself a little bit of room because I didn't want them so squished together. And I also want this to be kind of like an accordion so when I do roll it up it just rolls up really easy and as you go I also will tell you I did make one for my daughter and I realized this is kind of tedious so this is not something I want to make like 20 of them and like sell because it every time you do it you have to kind of measure mark pin and sew. And depending on how many you have, I think the set is, uh, I forget how many are in here, but it's quite, it's extra. And then again, I would start in from the end. So see how I didn't just start right next to the edge of the fabric. I gave myself a little bit of border out to this edge is then that way as I go, and do you see how this is longer? It's to allow me to have enough fabric to kind of make each of those pockets as I go. When I get to the end, well, then that's the size it is. Take your piece. Oh, you probably want some ribbon. And the next question, well, how much ribbon do I use? Well, guess what? I took extra long ribbon and I placed it in between the last piece and my pockets and I stitched all the way around, leaving an opening so I can turn this all the way out. Now, I am a fan of some top stitching. I realized I did not do a lot of top stitching 
I didn't need to. It really just laid pretty flat once I pressed it. Um, there are also the what to do with the extra fabric at the end and you're of the pens. Do a little tuck and that will allow you to kind of like give it a little end point so it looks nice and even. But you know what? By the time you're done, you're just going to use it. With the ribbon, it's going to be super long. Guess what? You roll it up tie your ribbon and then cut to the length that you want. So I want to encourage you that it's not so much about the patterns these days. A lot of times you can have just as much fun figuring it out and then realizing, hey, I figured this out and I made it. And I want you to try something that isn't so step by step by step this year and try out something on your sewing machine you haven't used before. It's going to take more time to to learn it, to do it. But guess what? You are one more step of understanding. And there's something about getting your brain going and creating and then stopping. And sometimes I'll stop and go, could I have done that differently or easier or should I done that step before it? Another thing that I like to sometimes do is I'll write down what I'm doing. I'm making my own pattern. Should I want to duplicate it? That's helpful. And if you have a cell phone, you take a picture too of what you've done along the steps. And that could be kind of a little documentation of how you've created something. So just in case you want to do it again, or maybe you get to the end and go, you know, that would have been cooler if I had had this much more fabric or if I had started with a piece that could have been for this part. I have one other little thing um, that I found. My daughter's 13 and um, her grandma made this. Um, it's just kind of like a little travel and I know it's all kind of a, there's a lot of pink. I mean the girls love the pink but she just made like some pockets and there's like a little, um, hey look there's some uh, places for some pins. <laughs> Look, there's pin places. Actually, they're kind of short, so they're kind of more of a crayon little place in here. There's a place for paper. And then on the front, there was actually a pocket. I mean, there's so many things that you could do. And, you know, sometimes people want just the right size to fit in a certain bag. I mean, you're going to have the skills to make this. So I hope that you will take some time to and it doesn't have to be a pin holder project. I just know people have asked me to share how I made this. Um, but if there's something out there that you're not spending hours trying to find the pattern, I know I get emailed like, "How's the? where's the pattern for that? Where's the pattern for that? And it's sometimes it's really not hard. Just go ahead and try it. What do you have to lose? I mean, the only thing that you have to fail at is not figuring it out. So with that, I hope you'll check out all of our videos that we have done. We have online courses to help you master even more about your machine. And I hope that if you make a pen holder, give us a shout out and show us what you make or what changes you've added to yours. All right, everybody, happy sewing and keep in touch if you need any of your sewing questions answered.